So you have your Phytech EFI system hooked up. You did your first start and warm up, set your throttle for the IAC steps, and you go out the next day to do your first cold start and the engine doesn't start right away. What do you do next? Well, that ends up being the cranking fuel section of the EFI system. This is under the Go EFI tuning section and is available on all of Phytech EFI systems where you could adjust cranking fuel when an engine is at multiple different temperatures to help the engine get started and run even when cold. Let's jump into it and I'll show you the parameters. Okay, now diving into the handheld, we're going to jump into Go EFI Tuning, and our third option is Crank and Warm Up. Under Crank and Warm Up, we have a few different parameters that we can play with. The very first one is our Prime Fuel Multiplier, which every time you key on the system, that's that first click of the injectors, this is the amount of fuel that's injected at that point in time. The next three options are Cranking Fuel, which is the amount of fuel that the system is giving based on each individual temperature uh, as long as the engine's under 500 RPM. Next is our crank IAC, which is the position the system is going to put the idle air motor when you first go to start the engine. And then we have our after start adjustments at 20, 65, and 170. After start takes place for about five seconds once the engine starts up and gets above 500 RPM. And then from there, we have our warm-up fuels, which is effectively the choke of the engine and will phase out completely once we get up to 170 or more degrees. So when we go to adjust these things, the most crucial thing to kind of look at is when you go to start the engine, how is the engine starting? Is it just cranking? Is it firing and dying? Is it firing? running for a little bit, stumbling and then dying, and that'll cater to how you want to adjust the system. Because if you have an engine that fires up, stumbles, then dies, you don't need to mess with your prime fuel multiplier because the engine was able to start. But something like that, you would want to work on your after start because the engine's stalling after you got the engine going. And then the most important part of all of this is the IAC setup there's no point in adjusting really any of your cold starting until you get your IAC set prior to doing any of these adjustments. So if you watch one of our throttle adjustment videos, that is the most important thing to do prior to diving into all of these other tuning menus. So once you got your throttle set properly, we can then choose where we want our crank IAC to be. Uh, the big thing with this one is, is the less air that you give the less RPM flare that you're gonna get initially. But at a certain point, you need a certain amount of air to get the engine to start. So let's fire up the engine. If there's any adjustments that we need to make, we can go in here and we can make any type of adjustment that we need. So just to throw something out there, I can drop our prime fuel multiplier down really low. A lot of people like to draw, draw it down 150, and then work more on your cranking fuels. So something like that will give less fuel initially. What you may find then is that you may need to increase your cranking fuels. Remember every change that you make, you gotta hit send to ECU to apply. So what you'll notice is more than likely you'll have to increase these values a little bit because we dropped that prime shot. Now a good adjustment on all of these settings in here is about increments of 10 at a time. So if we got our crank fuel 65 at five, if we want to increase it, we'll go up to 15. Once we start getting close, you can take that number down and we can adjust in increments of five at a time. If you're working on an LS system, they're a little bit more precise. So I usually say work in increments of five on the LS systems. That would also apply to anything that's a port injection system. So whether that's the ultra RAM or the ultra port systems, there are also ones that you can go with a little bit finer adjustment. <clears throat> Next would be our after start. Like I mentioned before, that's after the engine gets started and runs for a period of time. If you're noticing you're starting the engine 
and you're back in the dashboard section and your air fuel ratio is going really rich right after the engine starts, you can pull away from that after start enrichment so it doesn't go so rich initially. So I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna have the key on. We're gonna crank the engine. A big thing is look for an RPM right when the engine cranks over and we'll see how the engine starts. So as you can see there, the initial start was pretty good and our RPMs flared up to about 1500 RPM and then came down. If I wanted to make that rev flare less, what I can do is go into our crank and warm up menu and then I can draw our, let's not go too far, we'll drop down to 70 on the crank IAC. I'll turn this off allow the system to save. We'll go back to dashboard and we'll go to crank the engine again and we'll see what the system does this time. So as we could tell that time, the engine came down to an idle much quicker, but that's also because when it first fired up, it only went to about 1300 RPM and then came down. So that's another thing that you can do with the system is giving it less air. Now, we want to be careful with that cranking IAC, mainly because that's going to impact both your cold starts and your hot starts. But when it comes down to our crank and warm up, we could also try to give less fuel to the engine and see if the engine will fire up quicker. Sometimes it needs more, sometimes it needs less. Like I mentioned before, increments of 10 at a time is generally a number that we would want to play with. One of the things I would really recommend when we're trying to do a hot start, like at 170 degrees, is make your adjustment with the engine running, rev up the engine, and when it comes uh, at its peak RPM, kill the key and allow the engine to just run to a stall. What that's doing is it's pumping all of the air and fuel out of the intake and the cylinders. So when you go to do your next initial start, it'll be a much more true start. So with lowering the value, what it sounded like is the engine fired up much faster after about that first crank. It hit off pretty much the first cylinder, whereas before when we had this value up uh, to about zero, it was a little too much fuel and it went over about three revolutions before it fired up. So I hope that kind of shows you how you can play with these values and you're just listening to what the engine's doing based upon where you have the setting. What you may try to do is you may start at a zero, go to a plus 10, start the engine, listen to how it starts, go back the other direction, go to negative 10, listen to how the engine starts, and whatever way was working better, start working in that direction. Now when it comes down to our cold starts, so we're getting into winter time now, 20 degree Fahrenheit, you really only get one time a day to get a true cold start maybe two if you spread it out enough. This is one where I really recommend jotting the numbers down on a piece of paper and try from day to day and just play with the value. A lot of times on a cold, cold engine, it's gonna take a lot more fuel to get the engine going because you're starting with a completely dry intake manifold. You gotta wet that intake manifold and when the weather is really cold, the fuel does not want to stay atomized. So you have to use even more fuel to make up for that. So that's a number that you're going to have to kind of play with day to day to get to a real number that seems to work out. So that's a couple of ways that you can kind of play with the air fuel ratio 
and adding or removing cranking fuel to make sure that you're starting the engine optimally. This won't so much apply on a cold engine. You gotta have that O2 sensor warmed up completely. And to do that, you generally have to have the engine running for a period of time. But under a hot start, it's a cool way to try to make sure that you got the perfect amount of air fuel to the engine when trying to start the engine. Now, when you make your cold starts, just to revisit, you're gonna wanna have a notepad or remember what you're doing day to day. A good adjustment on the throttle body EFI systems is about 10 at a time. So if you're cranking fuel at 20 degrees is at negative 10 right now, and you see that the engine's having a hard time starting, you may go back to zero, and then your next adjustment will go up to 10, and then to 20. And you just gotta go day by day, because you really only get one true cold start a day. Now, you notice that the parameter settings is 20 degrees and 65 degrees. Let's assume that you're trying to start the engine and you're at 50 degrees. Well, in the computer, it's basically blending the numbers across a larger table that you don't have access to. So in that case, if you have your 20 degree Fahrenheit cranking fuel and you have your 65 degree cranking fuel 10 apart, so let's say that cranking fuel 20 degrees is negative 10 and your 65 degrees cranking fuel is zero. That means that halfway in between about 50 degrees is gonna be right at five, negative five. So the system will blend fuel across the table even though you don't have adjustment for it. Um, again, hot starts, kind of cool. You could watch the air fuel ratio. When you go to shut off the engine to make those adjustments, rev the engine up before you shut the key off to try to pump any fuel out of the engine so you can get a true cold, well, a true dry intake start. And that should help you tailor in how to make the engine start better. And then again, you could also play with that prime shot to get that first initial pop to get it to start up and go. There's a big community out there that believes in dropping that down to zero and work off cranking fuel only. That's another way that you could approach it. Um, just to throw it out there with the LS systems, the LS systems do not provide that prime shot until it starts to see RPM. So it is in there, but it's a lot more minimal. And then also just to bring it up, on a port injection system, these cold start adjustments are so much easier and it just comes down to where are you shooting fuel into the engine. On a port injection system, you're shooting right at the back of the valve, so that fuel is right at that cylinder right when it needs to be. Whereas with the throttle body EFI systems, I gotta wet the intake and then get enough fuel to then make it down to the cylinders as quickly as possible. So with the throttle body injection, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have to be a little bit more uh, aggressive with adjusting your fueling where I use the remark of 10 at a time with that, with the LS systems, generally five at a time is enough to see a change in those. I hope that answers any questions you have on how to set up that cranking fuel. If you have any questions on how to get the engine to crank up faster, please comment those down below. Also check out additional tech videos in the tech section.